so glad you could join us again, grade 10s. Today we're going to discover how to solve simultaneous equations graphically. Let's join Amashni as she shows us how. We need to find those values of x and y that satisfy both these equations. We named them equation 1 and equation 2. We are going to draw the graphs of these equations. It will help us to rewrite each of these equations in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Basically, this means that we need to write each of the equations with only y on the one side. Let's begin with equation 1. So we'll start by adding negative 2x to both sides of the equation. This gives us negative 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. Next, we divide by negative 3 on both sides. This gives us y is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 3x plus 3 divided by negative 3. This simplifies to y is equal to 2 divided by 3x minus 1. Let's see how we can manipulate the second equation and change it into the form y equals mx plus c. We are ready to plot the graphs of the two equations. We asked Haley and Wesley if they could show us how they drew their graphs. Let's see how Haley draws her graph. You can see from the equation that the y-intercept is equal to negative 1. So I can plot negative 1 on the y-axis. Now the gradient is 2 thirds or 2 divided by 3. Remember what these numbers show us. The number at the top, the numerator, shows us how much the y value changes, while at the same time the x value changes by the amount at the bottom. I know this means that from the point that we have on the graph, we must go up two units and three units to the right. That will give us the next point for this graph. So we can start at negative 1 on the y-axis and then go up two units and then move three units from this point in a positive x direction, that's to the right. The point where I end up is a point that lies on the graph. Won't the graph be a straight line because the equation is linear? That's right. So now I can do a straight line through the two points to complete my graph. That's great. We're ready for the other equation now. For the second equation, the y-intercept is negative 5. The gradient is 2. But 2? How do we know how much to move on the x and y axes? Well, think of 2 as 2 divided by 1. When we move up 2 units, we need to move to the right by 1 unit. Now both these numbers are positive for this example. Let's see what Wesley's graph looks like after he graphed the second equation. The red line shows the graph of the second equation. It is easy to see that the two graphs intersect at point A. One, two, three. One. So this point is a solution to our system of equations. That's correct. This means that the ordered pair x, y, which is equal to 3, 1, satisfies both these equations and is called the simultaneous solution of the equations. Now let's do a quick check to see if our ordered pair is really correct. To do this, we need to substitute the values x equals 3 and y equals 1 back into each of the equations. 
So for the first equation, we know that the left-hand side is equal to 2x minus 3y. We know that we need to substitute x as 3 and y as 1. So this gives us 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 3, which gives me 3, which is equal to the right-hand side. For the second equation, the left-hand side is equal to 4x minus 2y. And when we substitute the values, we get 4 times 3 minus 2 times 1. This gives us 4 times 3 is 12 minus 2, which gives us 10, which is equal to the right-hand side. Since the point 3, 1 makes both equations true, it is our solution. If the point made at least one of the equations false, you would have to go back and redo the example. Remember, your graphs have to be pretty accurate so that you can take a correct reading of the coordinates of point. We have seen in this example that if the lines intersect, there is one point of intersection and one solution. Now let's look at another example. Use graphs and find the values of x and y that satisfy both of these equations. Both equations are already in the form y equals mx plus c, so we can just plot the graphs. From the definition we used previously, we can see that both equations are linear, so the graphs will be straight lines. In the first equation, the y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. This means that y is equal to minus 1. That's this point over here. To find another point on the line, I use the gradient, which is the coefficient of x. In this case, it is negative 2 thirds. So the gradient is a negative. Okay, so we move two units up. One, two, and three units left. Remember, we're moving left because it's a negative direction. And we mark this point here. Now I join this point and the y-intercept. I label the line y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 1. Now for the other graph. The y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. This means that y is equal to positive 6. And I mark that here on the y-axis. The gradient of equation 2 is negative 2 thirds. So to find the other point, we move up two units from the y-intercept and three units to the left. We'll mark this point here. Wait a minute, something is strange here, isn't it? These lines seem to be parallel, but how can we be sure? Look at the equations. Did you notice that both the gradients are the same? Do you see that they are both negative 2 divided by 3? Since the gradients are equal, this tells us the lines have to be parallel. They both have the same slope. This means that in the case of having parallel lines, we will have no solution. Remember that parallel lines never meet. This means that it is always a good idea to first check the gradients of the lines to see if they're equal. This would immediately tell us that there can be no solution to the system of equations. What about this new system of equations? They are already labeled as equation 1 and equation 2. Equation 1 is already in the y-intercept form. By now, I'm sure you know how to plot this line. The y-intercept is at negative 1 here. The gradient is positive 2 thirds. So from the y-intercept, I move up two units, that's one, two, and then I've got to move to the right three units, one, two, three, and we'll mark this point. So we can draw a straight line through these two points here. As usual, we also need to label our line, so this is y is equal to two-thirds x minus one. Now we'll convert the second equation into the y-intercept form. We now have the simplified equation. But did you notice that this is exactly the same as equation 1? Now what would happen if I drew the graph? 
Obviously, this line must lie on the first graph. Now, what is the solution to our simultaneous equation? Or perhaps we can ask, how many points do these lines have in common? The answer is an infinite number of points. Does this mean that all the points are a solution? No, it does not. Be careful. Take a look. The point 2, 2 lies here, but it is not on the line. So this means that this is not a solution. For this set of equations, there are an infinite number of solutions, and each point in the solution lies on the line. So we can write this solution as y is equal to 2 thirds of x minus 1. When the equations being solved yield exactly the same line, the solution is the whole line. Let's recap some of the points that you need to remember when solving simultaneous equations graphically. If the two linear graphs are parallel, then there is no solution to the system of equations as the lines do not intersect. If the two linear graphs intersect at one point, then there is only one solution to the system of equations. If the two linear graphs lie on top of each other, then there are infinitely many solutions. That's it for now, grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Equations and Inequalities task video. You'll also be able to learn more about equations on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.